Hello everyone! And I apologize for not being able to get any videos out very much this week or the last two weeks. I had a guest over and they were priority number one, obviously. Which is a normal thing. If you haven't noticed, yes, my hair is more purple, dark blue now. One of those fun things that I do to myself and I just took a shower so it's not in the best condition. But that is normal. With everything being said, again, I apologize for my lack of being on here. Um, thank you for putting up with this. Today we are doing a lesson. It is going to be on meditation. So it's one of those classes that you think about, do you have to be, do you have to meditate to be a witch? No. Is it a good thing, tool to have? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, depends on who you talk to. Do all witches meditate? Not necessarily. Do all pagans meditate? Not necessary. Necessarily. It is somewhat of a choice of yourself. Um, this being class 8, like I said, we're going over tools and things that you do more in depth and buff stuff. So with meditation, how I see it's useful. To me, meditation is useful for multiple things. It helps clear your head. It helps clear your conscious. It helps you connect to yourself. Sometimes you may not want to connect with yourself, uh, but sometimes you do. Other times it's very necessary to. For me, it helps me get back my center. It helps me get my mind set on what I need to do. Can it be draining? Yes. Can you fall asleep in the middle of doing it? Yes. <laughs> is that okay? Yes, it is. It is fine. If you're going to one of those meditation classes, which they're fun and they're good and they're worth like the 10, 15 bucks that you pay or donate. And if you're in the middle of it and it's soothing music and the person's voice is very soothing, sometimes, yes, you will fall asleep. That is fine. Let's hope you don't snore. It is a normal thing to sometimes do that. That's why you're normally sitting in upright position. If you're laying back, there is a chance that you will fall asleep. But you will always be in a comfortable position when you meditate. That is very important. Because if you're uncomfortable in your body, it's hard to get into your mind. The upside of listening to a soothing voice while meditating. It helps center you. It helps guide you through what you need to do. It helps you visualize those doors with your eyes closed. Soft music playing is another good key to help soothe and calm yourself physically. I know for some people it might not work that way. For others it does. Um, meditation to each their own. Best places for meditation. Not on a bus. Um, I've learned that the hard way. Probably some of the best places is in your home, in one of the studios that they're being held in or whatnot. But where you're comfortable. Where you're physically comfortable and you're physically safe. The main thing is your safety. The big thing is being able to do this stuff and being okay with yourself. Being, having that feeling of security is one of the big things to meditation for me. To know that I'm in a safe spot where I can do this and I'll be okay. Meditation with children. I may have never personally had a child myself, but I have had lived with people with children. I've nannied. I have been there and babysat. I have dealt with children for quite a long time. I can tell you this much. Sometimes meditating with kids around is really, really hard. Um, best time to do it is when they're in bed or taking a nap or when they don't need you. When they're doing homework or at school or something like that. Especially if they're small children, you have to dedicate more of your time to those kids until they go to bed. Um, with uh, teenagers, young teens, uh, it's a little bit easier. One thing you can do 
is you can also use it to help kids with... Uh... When I was young, I was diagnosed with ADHD and ADD. I was diagnosed with both of them by two separate doctors, and which confused my mom because it's like, aren't you either or? But whatever. So it, how it helped me through this stuff, it helped me be able to control myself. If I'm able to sit there for hours on end with my eyes closed, listening to music, listening to a mantra, awake while doing it, yes, sometimes you'll fidget around and move your legs to make sure they don't fall asleep or they stop hurting. Um, it helped me be able to control myself. It helped me be able to calm down. It helped me on those days where I was just so frustrated with everything and I couldn't get anything done. There are days like that still for me that I get to the point of frustration. Best thing for me to do because I do not take medication for it anymore. I stopped taking that before high school. Best thing for me to do was to sit down and meditate. To sit down, calm down, get my center, get my focus. Let my demons escape from my head. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. It helped me a lot as a kid in my growth. It helped me be able to make it where I didn't need to take the pills that made me feel like a zombie. Am I saying it's right for everyone? No. I'm not a doctor. I'm not you. I'm not your child. I'm not your physician. I am just somebody teaching you about stuff. Am I saying take your kids off medication? Oh hell no. Keep your kids on whatever fucking medication they're on. Unless you see a problem with them or with the medication or how it's affecting their behavior, then you need to talk to your doctor. Then if the doctor refuses to do anything, you need to probably get a second opinion. But in the most part, do not ever take yourself or your child off medication without medical recommendation or talking to a licensed physician. A licensed, a licensed doctor. Let me get that straight. A doctor. Not a chiropractor. Not a dentist. A doctor. My mom did talk to my doctor about taking me off the pills and he wanted to see what I was like off of them. So for an entire summer, my mom took me off my Ritalin. I was on Ritalin. And I went from the child that was just sitting there like this back to that playful, smiling, happy kid who wanted nothing more but to read a good book, play outside, go swimming, ride my bike, have my imagination, have my tea parties with my Barbies. Yes, I had tea parties with my Barbies. And play with my siblings and draw. I have notebooks upon notebooks still of things I drew as a child. Where are they now? My mom has them because, well, to my mom, they bring her happiness. She can go through them and see, this is what my child did. My child made this for me. My mom loves that stuff. Another reason why she switched to having me try medication, not medication, but uh, meditation is because she thought it would help me cope with some of my own depression issues and anxiety issues, which it did. Hold on, this is bugging me. Sorry, we were playing with my crystal ball, so. But, uh, it helped me cope with a lot of my own internal issues, my own problems. And it helped me sort things out that I need to sort out. It still does. I had a, I will not hesitate to mention this, I had a bit of a breakdown yesterday where I just couldn't cope with anything or myself. So... I went to my room and I turned on my Celtic music station on Pandora. I have ad-free listening, which is a lifesaver. But I turned it on and I let myself get lost into a meditation for about two hours before I snapped back to me and went to bed. Honestly, sometimes it is the best thing to do to help center yourself. and. I've been known to go into one and not realize that two, three hours have passed. It calms me, it collects me, 
I know some of the things that go on are just my imagination, but sometimes it feels so real and peaceful that I can't help it. Like I said, meditation is not for everyone. I'm not saying that you have to do it. You don't have to. It's up to you. Like I said, the easiest time to do it is when you're alone or unless somebody wants to do it with you. Have music playing and get in the mode of your own head. Yes, you can use YouTubers or actual people for your guides into your meditation because they do have that. They do have pre-recorded things that you can find on YouTube, um, I believe Google Play, and a few other places that you can download and listen to and pull yourself into it. The best kind of music is either slow Celtic or uh, natural sounds like rainwater, soothing sounds. Um, bells are a good thing. It, it depends on what brings you to your inner peace. If rock music brings you to your inner peace, fucking use rock music. Do what makes you feel right when you're doing the meditation. Allow yourself a very comfortable position. You don't have to be sitting up. You don't have to be laying down. Just whatever position you find comfortable. And then when you sink into it, just imagine yourself, your spirit being pulled from your body and uh, going into an inner world of you, your tranquil place, your happy place, your secluded safe space in yourself, in your mind, a place only you can go. And no one else is welcomed unless you welcome them there. And when you want to come back, just visualize yourself sinking back into yourself and opening your eyes and taking a deep breath. If you have candles, make sure they're in a candle jar or holder like that. Scented candles are great, so are incense. Just remember to keep things away from fire hazards and be careful with it. You can do it with the lights on, you can do it with the lights off and candle lights, or you can do it however you feel comfortable. Meditation is a good way to help prepare for a spell, to help center yourself for homework, to help center yourself for the day. You can do water meditation, which I normally will do in a bathtub, but I won't fill the tub all the way. Um... Water meditation is really nice, but you have to make sure you don't fall asleep and dink your head underwater because that'll be the first way to wake you up, and that's not a fun way to wake up. Um, water meditation is a good way to help as well. We'll go more into that one later on um, because there's some specifics with it, and I don't have that notebook with me right now. So meditation is a good tool to use, a good thing to know. Do you necessarily have to do it? No. Is it a good thing to do? Yeah. I think it's pretty cool. It's a pretty good way to center myself, and I hope it centers other people. But with that, I will give you a good, have a great day, and I will actually have another lesson video out tomorrow because I've missed so much. All right, so you get a two days in a row. Go figure. You get eight and nine and two fell swoops. So have a great day, and blessed be.